the name of Jesus, every force fighting the fulfillment of your destiny, I curse them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every power mitigating against your destiny, I command that their powers over your destiny be destroyed. Every forces that are conspiring with the enemy to ensure that you don't reach your promised land are lonely by the force of life. I command that in the name of Jesus, all such forces become destroyed in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, the angels of heaven, they will help your fulfillment. In the mighty name of Jesus, the forces of the heart, for everything is created by Christ and they are created for him. I command, therefore, that every element in the universe, whether they are visible, whether they are invisible, whether they are thrones, whether they are principalities, whether they are powers, because they are created by Christ and you are in him. And he said to you that Christ in you is also the hope of glory. I therefore command all the forces and elements of the heart will begin to work to to bring to pass a manifestation of your glorious state in the name of Jesus. Ah, shame will be wiped away from your destiny today. Beni Agbano or Ubawilori Ayi Eloni in Cape of Asatata in Vraneke Stedi Gaboria da Provrini Talina Kazanta Rinamoshaba. I send the word of God to you today. Uh, for the Bible makes me to know that the word of God is light. I send the word of God, the word of God, the word of God into the captivity that is that, that is besieging your life. I command the power of captivity to, to be shattered in the name of Jesus. Because light cometh, darkness cannot comprehend. Every power of darkness that has held your destiny captive, today they lose their grip in the name of Jesus. Welcome to another hour of Bible study. You know me. Welcome to another hour. Of spiritual dominion. Today I felt led by God to speak to you on what I simply uh, titled Manifesting the Real You. Now let me tell you this. What I actually did, what God put in my heart is to let you know that the version, that version of you that you were when you gave your life to Christ, that is not the version that we enter into the promised land of God's purpose for you. We remember that when God wanted to take the people of Israel out of Egypt. He sent Moses. Now, when they were about to enter the promised land, God told Joshua to circumcise all, all of them. You know why? Because the version of them that left Egypt will not be qualified to be the version of them that we possess the promised land. It is true that God has promised you things. You have seen the vision. Prophets have spoken. But may I let you also know that there's what is called capacity development. Now, not just physical, mental capacity development, there's also what is called spiritual capacity development. And that is where many of us are failing. We just think that the way we are, prayerless, without the word of God, without practicing the scripture, you think that all the promises that God has made, we just come to pass like that. No. You say, but man of God, why? Let me ask you a question. How many of you that are well-to-do, who have good plan for their children, we give the inheritance that you have for your child to the child before he or she is fully developed? How many of you? If you have it in mind, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm building this company for my, for my children. When they finish their diploma, when they have not gone to college, when they have never known anything about the business, will you make them to become the CEO or the chairman or the managing director of your company? If your answer is no, why? You know why? Because for every position of exaltation in life, there's a need, there's a need for personal development to match the level where God is bringing you to. Apostle Paul was saying this. He said, he said, I, I put my flesh under that's what he said. He said, I prepare myself for what God has prepared for me. There is what God has prepared for you. The Lord wants you to be his representative among men. The Lord wants you, your, the Lord wants your manifestation anywhere to be the manifestation of Jesus. Jesus said to the disciples and speak to us. He said, I am going to my father. The works I do, you will do. And greater work than that, you will do. Because I'm going to the Father. I have spoken to you about the fact that we are at the ambassadors for Christ. Now, maybe I need to let you know that 
One of the reasons why the apostles were not able to cast out that demon from that man that the son had epilepsy was because of their level of spiritual development. Jesus said to them, it's because of your lack of faith. They said, we don't understand. Jesus said, you need to understand something. This kind does not go away except by fasting and prayer. And when we are talking of fasting, maybe I will, I will try and treat that some other time. When we are talking of fasting, we are not just talking of skipping meal, skipping food. We are talking of denying yourself of things that your flesh wants you to do. And deny yourself to do what your flesh does not want you to do, but which is commanded by God. Because the word fasting is another word for self-denial. Deny yourself of what the pleasure you want for a greater purpose. How many of us are ready to pay the price? Now, in the book of Luke chapter 9, in the book of Luke chapter 9, Jesus said, In whatever house you enter, stay there and from there depart. He told the disciples that, listen, I want to send you out. I can't go everywhere. I want to send you out as my representative. Anywhere you go, anywhere I send you to, stay there. God is talking to somebody, stay there. Where God sends you to may not be popular. The church God asks you to be may not be a big church. But if I were you, you will stay where God wants you to be. Because God is the author of your destiny. God is the one that knows what plan he has for your future. God is the one that knows the kind of training that you need to go through so that you can be able to occupy the position that he has for you in your future. If you mess up today, if you don't obey God, doing what God wants you to do, stay where God wants you to stay, that means you'll be missing the training that will qualify you for the level of honor in your tomorrow. What am I trying to say? Before you can enter into the inheritance that God has for us, you need to prepare yourself. Do you remember what the Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 8? He said, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not come to the imagination of men, is what God has prepared for those who love him. It is one thing for God to prepare it. It's another thing for you to be able to enter in. So what I want to do today is share with you why it is important for you to be able to discipline yourself, to grow spiritually. Hmm. And I want to first of all look at the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 because many of us today, we don't want to suffer and yet we want to receive the glory. Without the crown, without the cross, there can't be the crown. And the Bible tells us to look at Jesus. Hebrews 11, 12, Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. What does God want us to learn from him? Who for the joy that was set before him, he knew there's a glory coming. He knew there's a promise that the Father in heaven has made for him, which will give him great joy. Look at what he decided to do before the joy came. The Bible said, who for the joy that was set before him, endure the cross. Can you endure the cross? Remember, the, 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 the only reason why Jesus came is to come and die on the cross. Because dying on the cross is the summary of the salvation of mankind. And that's why he came. The plan and purpose of God for your life will also come with cross. Inconvenience that you have to endure. Pains that you have to endure. The Bible says he despised the shame. I said, really? That means there are things that, there are certain situations that happened in the life of Jesus Christ that made him to be personally ashamed. Maybe they were, they were just uh, bad mouthing him, maybe they were just castigating him. Maybe they, you know, that the Pharisees at one time they said that um, he was casting out devil with the spirit of Bezebub. That Those are the ones that are written. The Bible said that he despised the shame. There are things that he was not proud to be to, to be associated with, but he despised, he didn't allow the shame to stop him. But he went through the shame. He went through the shame. He endured the cross. Jesus said, If you are going to be my follower, you have to take up your cross daily and follow me. Are you ready to take up the cross? The cross is the identity of your ministry, identity of your destiny. It is the inconvenience that is associated with your glory. Everybody that God will use and make great in life, there are great responsibilities attached to the office. If you are the type of person that you are so naggy, you are so touchy, before people uh, uh, offend you, you will burst out in anger. 
all that character can become the devil's instrument in your day of glory, you better make sure you crucify it. He endured the cross. He, there are things that make him ashamed. We are not told what they are specifically. But he did not allow the shame, shameful occurrences to stop him. He despised the shame. He pretended as if they are not there because he has a joy set ahead of him. And the Bible said that, and now has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That is the future that he saw. That's the future he saw. So the future you see in your spirit, that glorious dream, that wonderful prophecy that have been given to you, those promises you see in the Bible, my dear, they are going to come to pass, but that version of you will not be the one that will, that will receive the delivery. There must be the need for development, spiritual development. You need to be able to develop yourself in the knowledge of... You have to, de you have to develop the appetite for discipline. You are still struggling with covetousness. The money that doesn't belong to you, you are still stealing it. You are still fornicating. You are still, you are still, you are still eyeing other people's wives. You are not yet ready for glory. You are not. And we all have to go through it. We all have to go through it. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, the Bible now, you know, creates a further explanation of this um, Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible talks about Jesus from Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 6 to verse 11. The Bible says, Who, being in the form of God, he did not count it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant, and coming in the likeness of man. Verse 8. The scripture says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. The Bible says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. If you do not humble yourself, Satan will, 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 will mess you up. The Bible says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you in due season. There is a season for your glorification. Until that season comes, you have to learn humility. The Bible says Jesus by himself, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. That is what it means to humble yourself. When you willingly decide to go through inconvenience, things that you know is disgraceful because of the future that you see for yourself. If you keep stealing and you keep having sex with people who are not your marital partner and you don't feel any shame, it is because you don't see anything better in your tomorrow. Everybody pay a price for a better tomorrow. The Bible says, He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. We are talking about Jesus. Even the death on the cross. You know why the Bible says even the death? Because the death of the cross is a shameful death in the time of Jesus Christ. It is like, you know, in Nigeria in those days, when they used to um, um, have a mass, mass uh, 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 shooting. They would shoot people that are thieves in the 70s, early 80s. All those Anini and all those other people, they would, they, they, they would tie them to the barrel and, and then they would shoot them in, in, the, in the public. Dying on the cross is like that. It was a disgrace. The brothers of Jesus will not be proud to be, to be associated with the man on the cross. In case you don't understand, do you notice that the, one, the man on the right hand side and the left hand side of Jesus, while he was on the cross, who are they? Thieves. That's to tell you that he was counted as a thief. What did he steal for God's sake? But he humbled himself and go through it. And what happened? Therefore, when God saw that uh -uh, Jesus was ready to to pay the price for the future. Therefore, God has highly... Ah, thank you, Jesus. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow in heaven, on heart, under the heart. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know what I've come to discover? Many of us, we desire the promotion. But, you see, the promotion is already there. God said, I know, the, I know the plan that I have for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. Romans 8 said, 
What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not even entered to your mind is what God has prepared. What God has prepared should not be your problem, should not be what you begin to fantasize on every day. Instead, commit yourself to paying the price that will get you prepared for the day of glory. Because everybody has their day of glory. And the, 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 the most catastrophic thing that can happen is when your day of glory come and your personality is not fit to carry the glory. Ah. Well, Aniel. And that's why God has sent me to you. That you should begin to prepare for the day of your glory. Every inconvenience you go through, that, that inconsiderate boss you have in your place of work is part of God training you. When Joseph was in the house of Potiphar, it was part of God training him. When Joseph was in the prison, it was part of God training him. When David was in the bush taking care of the sheep, his father forgot him. Men may forget, but it was God's, God's way. Of, oh my Luther, passing the Kaaba. It was God's way of preparing him for what he has been prepared for. He has been anointed, but there's a need for preparation. God asked me to tell you to stop complaining and start going through your exam. You are going through inconvenience, trial, tribulation. Maybe your pastor does not give you a opportunity to be able to preach or to share the Bible. Share it on the street. Don't say, I'm going to leave that church. I'll go to another place. You are just wasting your time. If God has placed you there, stay there. The way that pastor is treating you is part of God's plan so that you can be properly discipled and be built up in character. Don't mess up your day of glory. That's what God said I should come and tell you today. Because somebody is watching me, your day of glory is very, very close. And I can see that somebody, you have been enduring it, but right now it looks like you want to give up. Ah, ah, don't, no, don't give up. You are very close to your day of testimony. Hmm. In 2 Peter chapter 1, let, let, us, let me try to wrap it up. In 2 Peter chapter 1, from verse 2 to verse 4, Peter, being one of those who have worked with Jesus, who have seen his glory, who have also seen Jesus when he was weeping, when he was hungry, when he was thirsty, when he was alone, when in the book of John chapter 6, the people that he fed with food and he just taught them, they were, all of them turned their back and left him. So Peter knew firsthand what it takes to multiply increase. Jesus even told them, he said, you guys too can go. Peter said, where are we going? You are the one that has the word of life. So he has first-hand information, first-hand information, revelation as to how God looks at things. And then he wrote this to you. He said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. So God wants grace and peace to keep multiplying your life. How? Through the knowledge of God. What do you know about God? And the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. What do we know about Jesus Christ? Majority of us, what we know about Jesus is that he's our Savior. He came to die on the cross for us. But it's more than that. And the Bible is making you to see that the level of grace you enjoy will be, will be equivalent to the level of knowledge of God you have and the knowledge of Jesus Christ you have. So spend time with people like me, who is a teacher of the word. People that will expose your heart to the secret of God's word. Don't just run after prophets who will give you a word. A prophet can only give you a word that they receive from God. But God will not give them all the word you need for your destiny. Verse 3. Has his divine power has given unto us. You see, when the Bible says he has given unto us, he didn't say you are he's going to give. It's already delivered. He has given unto us how many things? All things that you need for life and godliness. But how do you get the delivery? Through the knowledge of him. You see, knowledge there again. Knowledge. Who is, through the knowledge of him, who called us? by glory and virtue. You are called to come and enjoy glory. You are called to come and dwell in glory. Don't remain in shame. But it is a matter of the level of knowledge of God and of Jesus that you have. Buy books that will give you understanding. Many people, uh, 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 this generation is a very funny generation. We have exalted the, the office of the prophetic more than the office of the teacher of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that this is a prophetic... Um, Error, but the Bible also says that because many people will ignore the truth of the word, many will be swayed and deceived by the enemy. Fake prophets we 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 deceive many and lead them to hell. Don't be one of them. Pant after knowledge. Verse 4. The Bible says, 
He's talking about the knowledge. He said, by which have been given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. The, when you begin to gain knowledge of God, you begin to know the precious promises he has made for you. When you begin to gain knowledge of Jesus, you begin to know the things that he has promised to do in your life. The Bible said that by these precious promises, through these precious promises, you will not become partaker of divine nature. There is a divine nature that, that, that glorified you that God has in mind by you having the knowledge of God and having the knowledge of Jesus Christ and you practice the things you know you now begin to metamorphose you begin to change you begin to transform into the divine nature that God has for you let me just wrap it up this way no natural um, uh, treasure not no treasure on heart command the highest value in the arrow state gold it has to be refined. Diamond, silver, all metals, every precious thing has to be refined. You know why? Because God is telling you that version of you that you are watching me right now, that are still things that need to be chiseled out of your life, things that God needs to remove out of your life, and you've got to be ready. And for you to know the things that God wants you to stop doing, that's why that scripture says that you become partaker of divine nature. I won't escape the corruption. Haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. How will you escape the corruption? By knowledge. When you begin to know the things that the Lord said, do not do. When you begin to know the things that Jesus said, this is how you need to live your life so that you can please him. Then you begin to have your divine nature manifest. I therefore pray for you that in the name of Jesus, grace to pay the price will come upon you. You will not be put to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know that as a man of God, it is always good that you associate with other people that can pray with you. That's why God told me that in Houston here, we should have Iron Sharpenet, Iron Ministers Prayer Meeting. It's a prayer meeting where ministers of the gospel will come together once in a month, every third Saturday of the month, by 12 o'clock in the afternoon. It's between 12 and 1.30. Join other ministers of the gospel in our church. The address will be on the screen. Join us on Saturday, third Saturday of the month by 12 o'clock. Let's come together and pray together. God told me that the one we are going to have this month is going to be is going to be an epic one that is filled with divine visitation. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do. And like I said, you need to gain knowledge. So, you you I have three books that I have keep announcing on this on this platform. I have vision fulfillment. Now is your turn. I have overcoming satanic operating system. I have secrets that guarantee financial abundance. I'm writing two books also that's going to be out very soon. Satan, I'm in charge here. It's, that's one of the titles of the book. That, and then the other one has to do with God opening your eyes so that you can see the truth of God's word. Listen to me. If you're interested in these books, send us offering and make a request for the books. You can send the offering through Zelle. You can buy po a, a postal order and send it to our church address and write in a paper your name, your address, how much you send and the books you want. And then I'll send them across to you. Maybe you also you said, you know what? I'd like to be a part of what this part of God is doing. You can be a part of what we do by, you know, um, sowing seed to support my ministry. When you give us any financial seed to support what we do, it is going towards preaching the gospel, making sure that the word of God is spread out to many more people. It doesn't mean that you have to leave your church if you have a church you are committed to. But you can also partake of the anointing of God on my life for prosperity by sowing a seed to join part of those who are partners with me in reaching the world for Christ. And if you don't have a regular church you attend, I beg you, stop staying at home. What you need majorly is the understanding of the word of God. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth you know will make you free. Your deliverance is not just in prayer. Your deliverance is not just in prophetic declaration. Your deliverance is in understanding of the scripture. And that's one of the things that God has granted to me. I'm also glad that we have the prophetic anointing in our church. And I'm a relational teacher of the word by his mercy. So if you, have, if you don't have a church you are committed to, join us every Sunday morning by 10 a.m. in the morning. And I trust that God will do you good as you come and join us in the name of Jesus Christ. Every Friday, we always have prayer and prophetic hour life on Facebook. So, Living Witness is the ID for our church on Facebook. You can just go to uh, your Facebook, 
type living witness you will see my picture send friend request i will accept you then every friday by 8 pm you can join us and i told you also that i intend to start having online bible class for those who are hungry for the understanding of the word of god especially the way god is revealing his secret to me if you if you want us to start doing it we're going to have to decide either to use um whatsapp platform or we want to use zoom so if you are interested in having that bible class once every week like on thursday evening maybe like around 8 pm to 9 pm every thursday send me your name your phone number and let me know you are interested in a bible study when i get enough number of people then i will launch it and then i will let more people know but i'm not going to start it until i see commitment because my heart desire is to help you to get better you can stay in your church and still be a particular of the anointing god has given to me in terms of revelation of the word of god i want you to know that god loves you and he wants you to triumph in life part of the anointing and ministry he has given to me is to help you become a man of force in the kingdom of darkness so that satan knows you and he can say just like he said he said paul i know jesus i know your name can be added to and that is my assignment so follow me up on twitter ref sam ajibade on youtube ref sam ajibade and i trust that god almighty will honor you as you do so i, I send messages every week to youtube and twitter god thank you until i come your way again next time don't you ever forget that no matter what you have gone through in life now that you're a child of god i believe that the testimony of your life will be that you are wonderful because Jesus is real. I'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye bye. Wow. I'm Reverend Sam Ajibade, and I want to take this time to specially invite you to be a part of our worship service any Sunday. You know, our church address is Grace Ministries International 11214, Plainfield Street by West Belfort, Suit D 77031. Listen to me. Everybody needs someone to talk to. In case you have need for counseling, just you can just call the number 872-731-7263. Listen to me. If you are looking for a place where you will encounter God and get insight in the world, I'll invite you to be a part of our church service every Sunday morning. God bless you. Until I see you. Bye-bye.